April is Alcohol Awareness Month. It's an opportunity to help remove the stigma associated with alcoholism and to promote treatment for those who are struggling. Now, this comes as one Minneapolis man recently marked two years in his commitment to sobriety. What gives him the strength? Well, family and art. Our Pauline Lee reports that his journey hasn't been easy. But that difficult road has led to some beautiful creations and revelations. You walk away energized. How could you not? In a small home office in Minneapolis, Ooh. Matt Moberg yeah. finds bliss between his brush strokes. Every stroke, I tried to think about what is the good gift that I got to wake up to today. The beauty of it, it takes a lot of strokes to make a big painting. These days, he says he has a lot to be thankful for. So how's life? I'm grateful. You know, another day, another chance to come out and try to be better. And a self-taught artist. What does water look like? Like that? Dedicating time to his craft just about every day. And so I think I've been really drawn to horses, especially as of late. Each colorful creation. <laughs> There's so much color in here. Gives him meaning. It keeps me alive. Gives me sane. And reflection on how hard it's been to get to this point. It's preemptive. It's, it's how I make sure that I don't go back to where I once was. A husband and father of three, he also serves as a pastor at the table, a church in South Minneapolis, and as co-chaplain for the Minnesota Timberwolves. Mm -hmm. He's also mm -hmm. a musician. Yeah. But a couple of years ago, it all became too much. You are Superman. You are capable. You can be in all places at once and be everybody's answer to everybody's question. But I, I can't. And I think for me, it's been a very destructive force to lie about who I actually am. So destruction, what kind of destruction? It turned to drinking all the time. It got really bad in ways people don't know, you know. He struggled knowing he needed help, but not knowing how to get it. I mean, can we get real? Mm -hmm. I um, was driving home and I had been drinking pretty heavily and I was hoping I would get into an accident or the cops pull me over and force my hand to try to go into recovery or change things. Um, <clears throat> there was no crash and no police to pull him over, but there were three young boys at home who looked to him as a role model. If I need a drink to be a good dad, that's not um, who I'm aspiring to be. It's not what I believe is good. It's not what's healthy. He started going to Alcoholics Anonymous meetings. The tokens, the medallions that we got, these are some of mine right here. In some ways, he says it was freeing. When I was able to say out loud in the presence of others that, hi, I'm Matt and I'm an alcoholic, I, I've been like terrified of saying those words out loud for a long time. The art became a part of his recovery as a suggestion from his therapist. Now, pink on the nose, not as psyched about that one. Part of it, too, is like I'm not on a stage, you know? There's not a guitar on me. There's not a pulpit before me. I don't need to be anybody or for. This is just like, can you just let whatever comes out, come out. He now sells his work on his website and has also commissioned pieces for the Timberwolves, including one for this season's City Edition jersey release. I'm kind of digging this one. But success has also come with setbacks. Yeah. Matt has relapsed twice in the past couple of years, most recently last summer when his wife Lauren found him on the floor unresponsive and had to call an ambulance. Like, I remember the smell of the hospital. I remember, like, looking at her. I remember telling Lauren, like, I don't know why I'm in the hospital. But for every relapse, there's a chance at recovery. And for me, like, the idea of I just fell flat on my face, but I can get up again is powerful. More than nine months have passed since then. What's your longest stretch of being sober? Is it right now? I think so, yeah. How does it feel? I feel really good right now. Arch continues to be his constant. There's that therapeutic meditative side for me with art. And he hopes it serves as a reminder for others that things aren't always black and white. That's a sweet, like, blendy kind of color that we got going on here. That each piece is progress, not perfection. It's not over would be my number one message. And every day is a chance to keep fighting. Life is a gift. Love is the point. And the more you try to outrun who you actually are, the more you miss out on that gift. Beautiful story there.
Well, if you or someone you know needs help, we've got some resources on WCCO.com.